Now, huh, do we? Huh, what's going on with this? Looks like Paul's joining. All right. Huh, why isn't this live streaming? Hey, Paul. Hey, uh, how's it going? Good. Just uh, making sure we're, uh, we're all here. You hear me okay? Yeah, sound great. Yep, sounds good. Awesome, nice awesome. backdrop. Thanks. Thanks. If, uh, if you're seeing that, I've gone too high. <laughs> all right. So, Paul, the way this, you're, you're up first. And what I have for you is how to keep your head when others are losing theirs. Yep. Pretty much that paraphrase well enough. Perfect. All right. And then, so you're going to go first. And the way this is going to work is I'll turn off everybody's video and mute everybody. I'll do a little introduction and each speaker has 18 minutes. I'll give a, I'll give a three minute warning, then a two minute warning and a one minute warning. And then hopefully won't ever have to, do the digital cane and turn my video on and <laughs> bring you to a halt. But well, so just be whack me out. <laughs> so just be mindful yeah. of the time. And so I'll introduce one, I'll give an overview and say, welcome all three of you. And then I'll introduce you first. I'll say, turn your video on and we'll banter about something, whatever we feel like. And then I'll, I'll say stage is yours. I'll turn my video off, audio off. Just pause for like a second because we want to be able to edit the video, edit the video. Um, and then the same thing, wrap up, thank you, however you want to end it, and then just like be quiet, and that'll be my cue to turn my video back on and do the next transition. Okay. Is that cool? For some reason, we're not live streaming to Facebook, which is really weird, but I don't know how to deal with that right now. <laughs> so we're, we're, supposed to be live streaming. I think we should be. Um, we're also recording. So we will publish the recording of this on YouTube and then we'll get the individual, uh, your individual presentations. I'll post them on your timeline and tag you so you know it's there and feel free to use it however you wish. We just like you to share as much as possible. All right. Is everybody psyched? Yep. Yep. All right, Paul, you're always psyched. Of course. Do any of you know each other? No, we do not. We well, do now. We do now. So, yeah, yeah, you'll get to you'll get to find so out more about. If we each other. don't absolutely uh, make sure to uh, private message me or connect with me. I would love to get to know you better. All right, let's see. Let's, let me see if I can get yep. this. I think something's hosed with the live streaming. Let me take this last few minutes and see if I can get that. It's goofy. All right, let's see if I can, if I have the technology here. So Paul, you must be in front of a green screen. What was that? You must be in front of a green screen. I am not, this is actually a, a wall. Oh, an actual drop, huh? Yeah, an actual drop. Yeah, which is new because of the life we're living in now. I figured we need some real real deal here. You had a different background behind you when you first jumped on, so I didn't know if it was just like- Yeah, yeah. that was the green, green screen. screen. Or if it was something else, yeah. Yeah. All right, let me see if I can rectify this. Looks like the- I've been, I've been playing with these uh, virtual backgrounds. I'll just show you real quick. You know, this one seems to be the one that got a lot of attention right now. Yeah. That, <laughs> Love it. That, that one that or, pops. or my, my paper, my, my toilet paper hoarding. Love That's it. It's a wolf video. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I, I got, a, uh, got a bunch of these. It's just a matter of uh, effectively changing them out for for what's appropriate that that's that's the biggest challenge right now yeah, yeah. i hear you i i need a big movie set where it just kind of flies out and flies back in yeah It'd be perfect 
I haven't I haven't been on a, a Zoom yet in the last week where the Tiger King background didn't go over very well. So <laughs> that, that does work. <laughs> All right. work, I, 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 I may grab a tiger just for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's amazing how we've all become uh, Zoom experts in the last month. Yeah, no kidding. I've got to catch up with you guys. I've just been do using a black photo screen in the back that my wife uses for photography. <laughs> Yeah, I've been just in this day and age. This is all they know of you. That's the challenge. This is it. Yeah. I've actually had a number of people ask me if the gym that's behind me is a virtual background, and I'm like, no, actually, this is this is my office and gym. I'll come by. <laughs> but everybody's like, no way. That's, there's no way. There's a, you're in a gym right now. <laughs> so that's yeah, worth that's advantage. All right, I'm gonna click this go live since I, I kind of had a do a plan B here. I got to set up. So cross your fingers. I'm going to click the go live. Actually, no, I'm going to turn everybody's video off. Click the go live button. All right. So we'll see you in a, in a bit. Where'd I go? <laughs> Where'd I go? Welcome everyone to episode 20. This is episode number 20 of Messages of Inspiration, Hope and Support brought to you by Speakers Pathway Coalition. I'm Don McGrath, co-founder of Speakers Pathway Coalition. And we're doing this because we asked ourselves, what can we do? Our executive team got together and we said, what can we do to help people? How can we serve people? And what we do is, is speaker training, online training, webinars, courses, and we said, hey, we know how to do this. And we know a lot of speakers. So let's reach out to our community. Let's find people who have a message they want to get out that can be inspiring, can, can foster hope, and can give people information and support that they're looking for. And I'm so, so excited today for this lineup because these, these are gentlemen that I know I, I've worked with before. I know them really, really well. And I know this, is, this might be one of the best episodes ever going to set the bar. So first up, we've got Paul Fink. And Paul Fink is going to be sharing with us about how to keep your head when others are losing theirs. And next is going to be Shannon, the chief, Cherry, who I had the pleasure of working with at a TEDx event in Cocoa Beach last year. And he's going to be talking to us about using the arts to get through this quarantine, this COVID-19 quarantine that we're under. And finally, Brian Bogert is going to be sharing with us about navigating uncertainty. And this is going to be absolutely fantastic. So I'd like to first welcome to the stage, welcome Paul to the stage. Click a couple of buttons to make that happen. Hey, Paul, how you doing? There we go. Awesome. How are you? Excellent. Thank you so much for stepping forward, putting your, putting your hand up and saying, hey, I want to be part of this to get some great information out and really help some people. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Don. All right, Paul, the stage is yours. Awesome. Hi, guys. I am Paul Fink, the Maverick Millionaire, and I help people really move to another level in their life. Finances is key for most people to create the lifestyle that they're looking for. So I do focus on money, however, with the understanding that money is not everything. It's about building a lifestyle. And I've got a passionate relationship with my wife. We started dating somewhere around 34 years ago. I've got six children, three sets of twins, and they are now uh, 18, 19, and 24. So adults in their own right and created a passionate relationship with all of that and create abundance in my business as well. And most people say, how do you accomplish all that? Well, guess what? I've been accomplishing that for 
uh, over 34 years now has been my entrepreneurial experience. I've never worked for anyone a day in my life. And in this day and age, people are going a little bit nuts that we've got this craziness going on in the world and people are reacting. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about how to take action versus reaction and how the reality is that, that this is no different than any other time in our world, even though it seems that way. And what I mean by that is that when you are really forthright, when you're really focused in on who you are, what you're about, and focused in on doing your task in the world, it's not about what's going on in the world, it's how you're acting within it. And so the first thing is understand that this too will pass, that everything that's going on in the world right now will change, will adjust, will settle down, if you will. And so all this will pass. And what, where will you be when the dust settles? What you do now will determine where you will be in the future. So be really clear that now is not the time to put your head on, in, under a blanket or in the sand, and it's not a time to hide or it's not a time to take a vacation. Now's the time to double down on what you're doing, what you want to do, on your goals, your dreams, your inspirations for and aspirations for your future. Now's the time to really make, take focused energy and do it in massive abundance. So taking action and believing that there's going to be a great tomorrow. Belief. What is your belief about your future? Is it that it's going to be awesome or is it that it's going to be devastating because you determine your future? And so you decide which future you want and hold on to that. So I'm going to start with a few processes. One is believe. How do you build up your belief system? One is through affirmations. We've heard of affirmations before. It's how you program your brain. So every time that you're hearing yourself say, oh man, it's going to be, it, it, the future's devastating. The, the future's doomed. Our economy is going to go in the, in the toilet. All these negative, um, uh, negative statements, you want to shift. As soon as you hear yourself saying that, you want to be saying, this is going to be great. I know we're going to come out of this with greatness and abundance. And the truth be told, there are people creating new opportunities right now. In almost every economic downturn, there have been millionaires and billionaires created. Why isn't it you this time? So be aware, opportunity is there. There is a positive lining to all of this, and you can create so much more when you're focused in on that. So one is shifting as soon as you hear the negative, shift your voice to be positive, and program yourself every day by saying positive attributes all day long, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. This is a great economy. I am going to come out of this with uh, amazing results. This is going to feed me such opportunity and I'm in search of it right now. Next is decide what you want. Decide what you want. Where are you going? Where are you going to end up? What does three months, six months, 12 months look like for you? Decide what you want. Decide, I want $300,000 over the next 12 months. I want my own, my own company. I want a new program to be promoting out there on virtual media. I want whatever it is, write it down and decide that's what you want. The next step is commitment level. You see, the challenge is a lot of people write down what they want and yet they're not really committed to it. I remember I wrote down my dream sheet when I first got started in these processes so many years ago. And I started writing down my dream sheet and I wrote down Lamborghini. I wanted a Lamborghini, it was on my dream sheet. I have no idea why I wrote that down other than I heard someone else talk about that that's what you're supposed to write down when you write your dream sheet, these big elaborate cars. 
I have no interest in cars. It's not a hobby of mine. It's of no interest. And I'll drive a 10 year old car forever. It's, it's really no big deal to me. Matter of fact, I just want to be limoed around for the rest of my life. I am, don't need to drive. So Lamborghini on my dream sheet really was just something that somebody had whispered in my ear that I should be writing down and I wrote it down. Only I had no commitment to make it happen. For everything you write down, every one of your goals on a scale of one to 10, what's your commitment to making it part of your life, to driving through and doing whatever it takes to create that in your life? What's your commitment? Is it a seven, an eight, a nine, or a 10? Once you decide what you want and you put down one through 10 as to what level of commitment you have around it, here's what I would suggest. Anything that is not a 10, you eliminate. You, you'd say, uh, that's not what I'm going after. Or you adjust the goal till it is a level 10 commitment around it. Because it's only the things that are at level 10 that you're really going to be able to create in your world, that you're going to be able to make happen. Because everything else, the smallest little thing will send you off course. So make sure everything that you decide on that you committed to is at a commitment level of a 10. And then you want to get focused. You want to get focused on what you're going to be doing day by day to create that. And every day, create a task list, a to-do list, if you will, that is connected to what you want, connected to short-term and long-term goals. Oftentimes, our day, and as you reflect back and you look back, the majority of our day is spent doing things that have nothing whatsoever to do with where we're going, our dream life, where we want to end up in, in three months, six months, one year, five years. It's all about shuffling around and just kind of wasting time. I want you to get really focused in on doing what's going to move you to your dream life because that's where we want to be. And unless we're working every single day, unless we're doing something every day to move us towards that life, it's never going to happen. Aristotle said we're either moving towards or we're moving away. We're either moving towards our dreams or we're moving away from them every single day. So absolutely, I want you to get focused on moving toward your dream life. And I want to take a moment and really clarify, I am a coach, I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer. I've been coaching entrepreneurs now for almost 15 years and been an entrepreneur myself for over 34 years. With all that experience and, and what I've been work, working with and working on, it's about, are you someone who's just starting up in your business? Or are you someone who's already have a business, already has one, and you want to bring it to another level? Either way, I've been working with people from startup all the way to, I think my largest company I'm working with is, has assets of over 250 million and everybody in between. You've got a company that you want to take to another level. Be really clear, even in this day, as people are losing their brain, losing their mind, you can succeed and actually move your business to a whole nother stratosphere. Get really clear with what you want. Create a commitment and a passion within you to create it at a level 10. And get busy on game plan on day-by-day -day actions that are gonna move you towards that. And I wanna help you do that. I wanna give you a couple gifts while we're here together. One is called, uh, and you can go to uh, maverickbonus.com, maverickbonus.com to grab hold of it. And what it is, it's totally free, where you're gonna have access to a ton of training that I've put together. I've got a back office, if you will, and I've got a portal that you can grab hold of that has over 30 trainings that you're going to be able to grab hold of that I want to give you and totally free and, and have access to it. It's limited access. So it's not free forever. It's free for right now. And you can download and you can watch all of it within seven days. I'm positive. All of this is yours for seven days. 
So all those trainings, I'm also going to give you a bunch of resources. I work with a bunch of tools and, and systems that often people ask me, what do I do to create the success I have? Here are the tools and systems that I use, and I want to share those with you as well. And we also set, have calls with me. And this is really where it gets exciting. I want to give you all a strategy call. I want you to get on the phone with me and so that we can really spend some time in mapping out what your next steps are. How do you make sure that you're not losing your mind when others are losing theirs? You bring in information and you get control of where you're going. See, most people, their stress comes from lack of control. Lack of control in their life, lack of control over, over what's happening. And that's where a lot of the stress is happening right now in our, this day and age. And so what I offer you up is a way to really get clear where we're going to sit down and, and go through step by step. What are your next steps? What are you doing now? And how can you move your business to another level and really get a, a calmness in your world, a calmness in your life because you've clarified your position in it. And that will help you lower your stress level, increase your results that you're getting out of your life, and create so much more. So absolutely, it's uh, maverickbonus.com. You're going to get a ton of training, 30 different trainings. And uh, I train on time management and, and business and marketing and sales, negotiations, uh, even real estate and how to build wealth on many different platforms. So all those things you're going to find in the back office, and you're also going to get calls with me. So why don't we spend some time together and make that happen? I want to add one last component. I talked about it at the beginning of this segment, is be sure that this is not a time to take vacation. This is not a time to hide. This is not a time to wallow in and, and fill up on Netflix shows. This is a time to get busy, to absolutely double down on your action. You want results. You want massive results in your life. How do you get that? Through massive action. Massive action. And now's the time to do it. I got to tell you, there, there's a ton of time that I'm saving in this day and age because I'm not traveling. I'm not traveling all around the world. And because of that, I'm utilizing that time to even create new systems, new processes in my business. And so we're going to come out of this stronger than we went in. And that's what I offer up to all of you. The understanding that you can do the same, that you can come out of this stronger than when you went in, that you can create more in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days than you ever imagined and have a stronger business, more viable business, and create more results in your life and actually have a, a, a better lifestyle than you ever thought possible. Believe that you can and watch where the results show up. So absolutely believe, decide, commit, focus, create a game plan and take massive action to create the results that you really want in your life. And understand that it's up to you. Me or any of the other speakers here that are helping you out and all the training you could bring forward, it's not about us, it's about you. What are you doing in your world? It's your responsibility to engage with it. What are you doing with your life? It's your responsibility to live it. It's up to you. See, we all have a life and oftentimes we look to focus elsewhere, blame others for what is. Oh, it's the government, it's the, it's the economy, it's, no, it's, it's you. You are responsible, 100% responsible for who you are, what you do and how you show up and for the results that you're getting in your world. 100% when you look around, how grabbing hold of that charge. I want to start at having you ask a specific question. 
and look what's gone. I can't believe it. It's it, it, my life is ruined. I want you to ask yourself, how, how can I come out of this more powerful than I went in? How can I create more in my business? How can I have a lifestyle that I would really enjoy? How can I live my passion every single day? The powerhouse, how can I? Asking yourself that about every aspect of your life because now's the time to get clear with where absolutely come some time. I want this huge gift bonus.com brick bonus.com gift. It's over 30 different trainings. I'm offering you on lifestyle business and also time with me to spend some time and let's do a strategy call. And it is a real, we get to go through exactly where you are, what you do and how to get to the next. And then how to get there. This is my passion, my thrill to be here. so much for the time to be here for sharing a few moments of your life with me. So I guess I have one or two more moments. So a couple other things. All that I've done and done, I believe is coming on now. Yes, indeed. Very good. Maverickbonus.com guys. Uh, I've been doing this for a while and I've been sharing. My passion is to help us and I've been enjoying for so long now. The abundance that for each and every one of you, you're able. To and I think we were losing losing Paul. Is uh, I thought he was actually done because it went quiet, and I think he's got some connect connectivity issues. But absolutely, thank you so much, Paul. I see I see you rejoining, and thank you so much for sharing that wisdom. I love I love what you said about commit and take massive action. One of the things that, that we find with uh, some folks that when they join Speakers Pathway is often they're doing like a million things and but not really getting momentum in any one of them. And now right. more than ever, when most of us are pivoting, it's important, I think, to not just add one more thing to what you're doing, but to find that pivot and really just go all in. All in. It's one of the secrets to success that understanding that all in creates win, partial in creates a loss. Most people believe, oh man, I'm in 70, 80, 90. That little, that extra 1% that extra piece at the end of the game that'll win the race. And they're missing that because they don't just go all in on everything. Play full out, no matter what you do, and watch the results follow. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today, Paul. Really, really appreciate you being here. My pleasure. All right, so uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. A uh, little bit of technical difficulty with the audio, but um, I'm so excited for this, this next guest. He's an artist, he's a business owner, and he's just going to be sharing with us about how to use the arts to make it through this quarantine. And let me bring Shannon Chief Cherry to the stage. Hey, Shannon. Hey. How are you doing? Good. So glad you could join us. And thank you so much for sticking your hand up, volunteering to share your message and be part of this program. No, thank you. All right. And uh, good afternoon uh, to our friends here. 
All right. Um, you just, uh, I'm going to turn my video off and pause for a second. And the stage will be all yours. I want to say good afternoon to all of our friends here on Facebook and uh, eventually on YouTube. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please smash a like and a subscribe. I think this is a wonderful thing that the Speakers Pathway Coalition is doing. So during this lockdown, this quarantine, have you been stuck inside after cooking, filling out loan forms, filing unemployment reports or checking emails? Are you tired of watching the Tiger King, daily coronavirus briefings or replays of NBA playoff games? Have you had enough Facebook fighting? Tom Brady, Buccaneers news. That's my team. Political bickering or media bias from both ends. Have you found the toilet paper yet? Okay, not that question yet. We've all just about had it, haven't we? I mean, I'm right there with you. I've fallen into the traps as well. And the worst part is for those of us with families, we have children that need us and we find ourselves completely helpless because of the overwhelming feelings of being trapped and the darkness of feeling unproductive. Obviously, both economic and social futility cause immense stress. No one's denying that. I feel the weight of those heavy burdens daily. Oh my gosh. But how do we address that? Are we victims of productive lifestyles? And are we financially defining our wins like we live in some sort of Excel spreadsheet? Well, I have, and I absolutely do. I have more than a few spreadsheets to track everything. I track every job. I track analytics and sales, marketing, all of my gigs, every show, even every vacation trip. I can tell you my highest grossing year of income and my lowest. I'm sure you could tell me your financial successes and failures too. Mine have been monumental on both ends. But is productivity and success planning what got us here? Do we suddenly feel trapped and helpless during this pandemic because we've fallen prey to our own work-life habits? The answers of addressing this certainly won't cure the pandemic and they won't save our lives from sickness. They could, however, help us better cope with the historical changes we're looking at right now. We have fundamentally wired ourselves to be productive people, haven't we? We're trained to think this way. We're trained to analyze our work and that our efforts will be rewarded if and only if the numbers work out. As the saying in business goes, it's all about the numbers. And finding those numbers right now are causing many of us, myself included, much stress. I believe it'd be hard to support or deny the statement, however, without data and without facts. The experts can provide answers to the simpler question. Can the arts help us reduce stress? Well, in 2016, Garaja Kemal, assistant professor of the creative arts therapies at Drexel University, says so. Absolutely says so. In fact, Kemal led a study examining the effects of making art on stress-related hormones in the body. The results published in Art Therapy, Journal of the American Art Therapy Association, titled Reduction of Cortisol Levels, and participants' responses following art making, found that 45 minutes of creative activity significantly lessens stress in the body, regardless of artistic experience or talent. So we don't even have to be talented, do we? Wow. We just need to engage ourselves in a creative activity at least 45 minutes a day. Just 45 minutes. I can do so much on TV and so much on Facebook in 45 minutes. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. And YouTube? I spent that much time watching cooking videos at 2 a.m. recently 
while following unemployment online. Anyhow, that's another story. I want you to know that I'm not flying through this blind. I've researched the correlation between the arts and our lives. A little more than a year ago, I actually did a TEDx talk on the benefits of traveling for business and taking your art with you entitled, Don't Forget Your Carry-On from TEDx Cocoa Beach. This is absolutely a topic of fascination for me personally. Check it out if you haven't already. I can share a link to this talk with the Speakers Coalition Facebook page. If you enjoy it, mash the thumbs up as it helps the algorithm and please give me a YouTube like and a social share. But seriously, not what this is about today though. In fact, do not travel right now, repeat. Do not travel if you can help it. Seriously, if you have to travel, social distance and stay home as much as you can. I repeat, stay home. However, the current data shows that even when you're carry on, or as I illustrate in my TEDx talk, the art that you can take with you is with you, locked down with you in your own home you can still absolutely benefit from the activity and to a great extent. And not only do you reduce cortisol levels that ultimately reduce stress, but you build your tolerance to being stuck inside by pouring yourself into that creative activity or that creative vehicle that your mind craves and needs to be doing. Currently, I'm actually unemployed and stuck at home and was completely devastated as the company I worked hard for as VP of sales and marketing went under and for sale back in February due to issues both related and unrelated to COVID-19. I saw my saxophones and thought, well, I guess I can practice while I search for work. I didn't. I, I didn't immediately. While, while time went by and the state was locked down and there was not currently remote jobs for me with my 18 years of professional sales and marketing skills. I can't go out and play gigs because of the shutdown. It's hard. I know many of you are going through the same thing. You know what I can do though? I found that while a career search is underway, I can research and practice saxophone as well as voice like never before. I can practice my cooking and baking skills, creatively speaking, of course. I can work on social media performances remotely with my bandmates and even with a virtual tip jar. I can teach saxophone and voice lessons via Zoom. I can even teach my kids instruments and a little music theory. There's so much in the arts to help bring down the stress. Reducing stress and feeling the satisfaction of accomplishing those very milestones in our artistic endeavors and creative avenues will go a long, long way in channeling our coronavirus lockdown darkness and our quarantine struggles. I'm telling you, it will absolutely help birth a society better to cope with the struggles of a pandemic disaster. Can you imagine what that would look like? What if, what if in two years from now, coronavirus comes back? Oh, God forbid. But what if it does? If we need to stay at home, what will you do? Will you go into a social and mental place that isn't healthy for any of us? Will you go to a deep, dark place? Or will we, together, become better authors, better musicians, painters, dancers, photographers, designers, poets, sculptors, or more creative chefs even? And if we can enrich our lives, how much better do our lives look like coming out of this storm with better creative skills? better creative skills for our workplace, better creative skills for our family, better creative skills for our society, and most importantly, better creative skills for ourselves. Artists working in every field, bringing creative light in a difficult new world, 
with new challenges. That is our big opportunity right now. And if we're to truly operate in a holistic view of success, not just financial success, but total personal success, in many ways, this pandemic can be a blessing to our personal lives and to others like no other. We can finally spend time working at our crafts. In fact, we have no choice. Dolly Parton once said, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. That's us in a nutshell right now, folks. We've forgotten about it. We're so beyond nine to five. Let's start working on our crafts today so that when we go back to normal, whatever that normal looks like, and I'm right here with you, we can redefine what actual success looks like, balanced and creative lives. I'm Shannon Cherry, I hope to talk to you soon. Please be safe, my friends. Wow, I, I love your message, Shannon. I love your message. And I was there to see you and watch you give that talk in Cocoa Beach and you just totally rocked it. And I, I, I love what you said that, what if this happens again? Will we be in the meltdown or will we say, hey, we got this, <laughs> right? And I, I think the better way to respond is, hey, we got this. Absolutely. So I, I really love your message and thank you so much for sharing your passion and your art and your energy with us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Wow. What, what great wisdom and our third speaker for today, I am just so excited to bring on. I met Brian, Brian Boger, uh, a few months ago, and I was just very impressed by everything that he's done, kind of the things that he's come through in his life, the businesses that he started, the way he speaks, the way he communicates, and just the heart, you'll, you'll see exactly what I mean. So welcome. Brian? Hey, Don. Happy hey, to be with you. Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. So, so I so appreciate you putting your hand up, stepping forward to be, to be part of this program. So uh, you're going to be talking to us about navigating uncertainty. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. I wouldn't miss this opportunity for the world. So thank you for what you're doing. All right, the stage is all yours. The only thing certain at this time is uncertainty. Imagine walking out of a store, walking to your car after a shopping trip, and turning your head to see a truck barreling 40 miles an hour right at you with no way to react. That's where this story begins. There was a mother and her two sons, 14 months apart, that had gone to Walmart to get a one inch paintbrush. And as they were headed back to the car, the youngest of the two boys who always had an excitement and vigor for life was a few feet ahead of his mom and his brother. He was excited to get home to put that one inch paintbrush to work. So he got to the car first, put his hand on the handle and waited for his mom and brother to catch up for his mom to unlock the doors. While this was happening, a truck pulled up in front of the Walmart that they had just exited. And the driver and the middle passenger got out. The passenger all the way to the right felt the truck moving backwards. So he moved over to put his foot on the brake as any of us would have done. But instead he hit the gas. Combination of shock and force threw him up onto the steering wheel. And before you know it, he was catapulting 40 miles an hour across the parking lot. Now I know you can see where this is headed. This family was parked in an end spot. He got to the median, went up and over the median, went up and over the tree in the median and continued on to hit this family's car where this boy was holding onto the handle. It threw him to the ground, ran over him and tumbled him, tore his spleen, left a tire track scar on his stomach, 
and continued on to sever his left arm completely from his body. This was August 10th, 115 degree day in Phoenix, and they're laying on black asphalt with complete catastrophe. What started as a simple trip to get a one inch paintbrush created a massive amount of uncertainty for this family. Uncertainty at that moment on whether or not this boy would live. Uncertainty at that moment as to whether or not this arm would ever be reattached. And uncertainty as to what the future would hold to recover for this entire family. Fortunately, his guardian angel walked out of Walmart right at that time. It was a nurse who watched the entire thing happen. Run, ran over, she realized that this was a life and limb scenario and she immediately went into action. She put pressure on the wound and stopped the bleeding to save his life and simultaneously instructed some innocent bystanders to run inside, grab a cooler from the Walmart and fill it with ice from the convenience center to get his arm on ice within minutes to give him hope of potentially being able to not only live, but have a functioning arm at some point. First ambulance it was called got into a car accident. So as if the day wasn't bad enough, there was a little more uncertainty created as to how long it would be to actually get into the place where they could get recovery. At the time, when they actually got him into the hospital, it's always life and limb, they fixed the internal bleeding and then went on the path to figure out what is next. There was only three surgeons in the valley in Phoenix at the time that were even capable of performing such a surgery. One of them was out of town. One of them had just worked a 12 hour day and said, I can't take on the surgery. And the last one had also worked a 12 hour day, but said, this is a kid, I gotta give him a fighting chance. Fortunately, this doctor was aware enough and intentional enough to recognize that despite the uncertainty, he had to go into action and he had to plan, recognizing this wasn't a one, two, three, or four surgery ordeal. This was gonna be a five, 10, 15, 25 surgery ordeal. And that's if the reattachment was gonna be successful. Over the next two weeks, there was a number of surgeries and he went in and he was flagging and tagging nerves and veins and muscles to be able to go into and use in a future date. And four months later, they went in to reattach the nerves and really be able to focus on getting feeling and movement back into this boy's arm. 19 hours, the surgeon stood by the table with unbelievable conviction. He took one break to take a handful of M&Ms and a potty break. And other than that, he was focused vigilantly on what needed to happen. It was four months later that I remember feeling my hand for the very first time. It was four months later that I was able to wiggle my fingers for the very first time. It was four months later that hope was restored, that I would be able to grow up and live a happy, healthy, and productive life. And uncertainty at that moment started to shift to certainty, but there was still uncertainty in the certainty of what the future would hold because this was only a beginning state of the process of recovery. Now, I know you weren't expecting it to go there today. And yes, I have a very unique story. But what I've learned in all my time of doing this and all my time of speaking and all my time of coaching individuals to get unstuck into the next level is that we all have a unique story. What's important is that we pause and recognize what are the lessons we can extract from those stories? How do we become aware of them? And how do we become intentional with applying them in our lives? And how do we be able to tap into the collective wisdom and lessons of all of those around us to shorten the curve for all of us to grow. One of the most important lessons I learned in that time is to not get stuck by what had happened to me, but get moved by what I could do with it. I learned to not get stuck by what had happened to me, but get moved by what I could do with it. We are in a time right now where we are collectively in the same story. And this story is riddled with uncertainty. A little over a month ago, COVID-19 came barreling at us with little or no time to react. And this uncertainty has manifested in a huge way. We're uncertain about what, whether or not COVID-19 was real and how it was gonna impact us. We were uncertain as to how this was gonna look for our finances and our health and our safety. We were uncertain about what this was gonna look like and how it would spread. And uncertainty manifests as stress, anxiety, fear, and scarcity mindsets, hence, why toilet paper became the most popular product in the United States. So what we're gonna talk about here in the next few minutes is three primary things that I've seen bubble up over the last few weeks and how to actually navigate through them because that's what we have to do at the moment is navigate through uncertainty and get ourselves back on track. And many people are experiencing varying levels of fatigue right now. And these are caused by three primary things as I've seen. First, we have to recognize that what we're experiencing is a collective trauma. 
that is bringing up profound grief, loss, panic over livelihoods, panic over loss of lives or loved ones. We're grieving the loss of life as we knew it. We're grieving the loss of jobs. We're grieving the loss of financial security and the ability to plan and have stability and any element of control in our lives. Our nervous systems are literally barely coping with the sense of threat and vigilance for safety. And many people are balancing between looking forward and then feeling numb, frozen, and stuck, shutting down in response to it all. People are literally trying to just survive poverty, fear, re-triggering of trauma, re-triggering of other mental health difficulties at the moment. And so my first step to all of us is that we must feel in order to heal. We have to recognize that the heaviness and the emotion that we're all experiencing is real and now is not the time to suppress. Now is the time to recognize what's happening and give ourselves and those around us permission and grace to process what's actually happening. If we don't give ourselves that space, we will not move through this. Second, we have to recognize that we've been knocked out of autopilot. Dr. Zimmerman back in 1986 did a phenomenal study that came up with a stat that I love around this concept of awareness. Our minds process 11 million bits of information per second, but we're only consciously aware of about 40. And so what that means is that we are largely led by the unconscious that we are largely a product of our environments, our conditioning, our patterns, our habits, that we are actually not actively making decisions, that we aren't consciously aware in the things that we are doing. And so when COVID-19 gets hit and all of a sudden we are knocked out of autopilot, our habits and our formations just go out the window. We no longer can get up and go through our day, go through the car ride, get ready for work and show up at the office and not realize what had happened the prior two hours. And for many of us that are lucky enough to have our jobs and keep them during this time, we're working in the confines of our home while simultaneously trying to balance all of our family needs and childcare and learning new technology and distance learning and figuring out what to eat. And our daily lives have been completely uprooted. And we're having to figure out all these new dilemmas and thought processes that are going through our worlds. Like, do I need to worry about the cardboard packages that are being delivered by Amazon on my porch? Is food delivery really safe? Do I need to disinfect anything there? What about my groceries? Do I need to disinfect that? How do I stay in shape? What does my pattern and routines look like? Can I hug my kids? Can I be with my family that's outside of these four walls? When are we going to get back to normal? We don't understand what this is looking like. So the reality of it is we are experiencing decision fatigue because we have nothing to rely on in terms of autopilot moments anymore. We have to make active decisions at every minute of every day right now, just simply to get through. And we don't know what the world looks like six hours from now. The beautiful opportunity that exists in this though, is that it's our opportunity to take back control of our lives, shift our unconscious to the conscious, shift our lead states to the aware states and take the ability to recognize and take toll on our lives historically, what was contributing to our lives, what was taking away and draining our energy from our lives, and where possible, do an analysis of what we want that to look like moving forward. Get really, really clear on the things that are important to us and the actions we can take to control those. And that's what we have the ability to do right now, as long as we process and feel, which was the first step. Lastly, we're feeling an immense amount of pressure to do more and be more right now. There are messages all over the place. Like if you don't come out of this with a better skill or a better thing, that, that it's not for lack of time, it's for lack of discipline. And I want to be the person to say something different than that. Yes, this is a time for positivity. Yes, this is a time for opportunity. But if we don't feel and heal, and if we don't recognize how we can establish new patterns and new habits in our lives that are draining and causing fatigue, then it doesn't matter. We can't focus on anything proactive and future focused and objective. And so one big thing I really want to focus on right now is let's get the word should out of our language. A number of my clients that have come to me over the last few weeks and been like, Brian, I should be able to get up and just work out. I should be able to shut off the TV after one episode. I should be able to make good choices with my food. I should be able to be more patient with my children. I should be good at helping with the distance learning. I should be able to balance all these things and still be crushing it at work. Well, guess what? There is no precedent for what we are experiencing in the globe right now should doesn't even exist and should automatically implies that whatever you're doing is not good enough. And so I want us to remove should from our language and replace it with could. What we have to do is focus on progress, not perfection. And replacing should with could allows us to change those languages to say, what could I do differently tomorrow? What could I do to get myself moving? What could I do to make changes in my diet? What could I do to manage and balance all of this chaos in the world right now? And so how do we manage through that? But let's make sure that we remove should and replace with could. We are certain that this is our new reality, at least for now. 
But now that we are, that our uncertainty has shifted to certainty, we know COVID-19 is not going away. We know there's impact. We know this is happening. We're now having uncertainty in our certainty. We don't know what the future holds. And that creates and manifests as fear for many people. So to close this out today, let's touch on some components of fear and how do we move through this? I read a phenomenal book a few months back called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Dr. Susan Jeffers. And she outlines that there's really three layers to fear. Level one fears are those that happen to us, aging, becoming disabled, retirement, being alone, children leaving home. And she lists a whole bunch of examples. Level two fears are things that are inner states of mind rather than exterior situations. So things like rejection, being conned, success, helplessness, feeling stuck. But level three fears, which are the root of all fears, is what we really need to focus on. And it's the question, can I handle it? And the truth is, if you knew you can handle anything that came your way, what would you possibly have to fear? And she outlines that the answer is absolutely nothing. So here is one thing I am absolutely certain of. I am 100% certain that we can handle this. I am 100% certain that we will all be okay. And I am 100% certain that we will be stronger and better off because of this time together. So I want us to focus on a couple things. One, give yourself grace and permission to process. If we don't feel, we don't heal. Two, recognize you've been knocked out of autopilot and have an opportunity to take back control of your life. Three, Eliminate the word should and replace it with the word could. And four, know that you can and we will handle this together. So let's not get stuck by what is happening to us, but instead get moved by what we can do with it. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here with you today. And I'm looking forward to staying in touch and helping any of you that I have the ability to do. Awesome message, Brian. Absolutely awesome. And I, I loved hearing your story from the start. I had actually never heard your whole story. So absolutely fantastic. And uh, what a story and what, what wisdom. And I, I love what you said about we are going to get through this. And in fact, um, I've kind of been, you know, I, I do updates every day with my wife. Hey, here's what's going on here in Colorado. And we're kind of rounding the corner on this doggone thing. I mean, there's real signs of hope. We, we are, I mean, it's just, we're making progress. All this effort that we're going through, all the things that we're doing, it's making a difference. So we're, right. we are going to get there. Absolutely. Um, That's right. And, and I also love, cause I, I feel this way here. Here's the thing. I love what you said that there's all this positivity out there. There's all this, you know, you got to come out with a new skill and you got to, and I, I, I like that, but I tell you every single person who says that has days like I have mm -hmm. where I get up, and I'm like, uh, I should do this. I don't feel like it. Yep. You know, I, I, I know I should, but this is kicking my butt today. And I love right. what you said, but just acknowledging that it's, it's there. It's really difficult. And there's not a single person I've talked to crazy high performers, crazy successful people, mental toughness coaches. There's not a single person I haven't talked to that this hasn't rattled in some capacity. So we've got to recognize and just be vulnerable and transparent about that because we're all feeling this. We've got to pay attention to it. And that's how we move through it. So I appreciate you saying that, Don. I'm the same way. It's been a roller coaster of emotions for the last month. And I think it's going to continue to be for a little while. So we've got to accept that so we can start to move through it. And this, the rounding the corner thing has got me excited. And I just, you know, I've been having trouble staying consistent with my workouts and I'm a nut about it. But today it's like, no, this is the beginning. Like I'm training for the reopening. I'm, I'm training right. for that first day that I can go out climbing, which I think is probably like a month away. So, you know, yeah. I, I think that I, I would urge people to say, you know, start looking toward what that's going to feel like. Right. And what are some of the things that, that you want to do today that are going to start preparing you for that, that tomorrow? 100% what you did is you built a climbing gym in your basement, right? So you weren't waiting for the world to come to you. You came to bring your world into your own space and you've been capitalizing and controlling that. So it's like, despite the fact that you struggle on certain days, you're still taking action to do the things that are necessary to keep yourself doing the stuff that fills you and your bucket. And that's what's really important too. And people like you and Paul and Shannon 
and all the other 120 speakers that we're having on this stage over the, the span of a couple of months is feeding my soul, is feeding the souls of many people, being there when you need either the kick in the butt sometimes or sometimes the bootstrap to say, hey, you know, it's going to be all right. It sucks. Yes. <laughs> but let's see where we go from here. So I really appreciate you being part of this, Brian. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of it. Well, that is episode number 20 of Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. 20 episodes, four weeks we've done this. We've, we have, I think, another four or five weeks that we have speakers booked, booked for. And our team at Speakers Pathway is, right now we're in discussion about kind of what's next. What's the next way that we can help people? What's the next way that we can give? And I'm looking so forward to all the speakers who are coming up and this is just a blessing for us at Speakers Pathway to be able to provide the stage for, for talks like Paul's and Shannon's and, and Brian's. And uh, so stay tuned, come join us tomorrow. And we're doing this every weekday at 9, 9 a.m. Pacific for the foreseeable future. So tune in and uh, also go to speakerspathway.com. You can see, you'll see right there in the middle of the homepage is messages of inspiration, hope, and support. And if you click on that, it's going to bring you to a page with the talks of all the speakers that we've had thus far that we've been able to edit their videos. So we want to just keep the sharing, keep the messages. This stuff's out there forever. So just share, keep sharing it. Anybody you know who could benefit by one of these talks, share it with them, send them to the speaker's pathway page. They, they can find those talks there. And, uh, and this is just, just an honor. So thank you again so much, Paul. Shannon and Brian. Bye-bye.